want to show you how to take an ordinary tray and turn it into something extraordinary. This little vanity tray is in honor of my grandmother whom I lost on April the 1st this year. This little box sat on her desk and contained all of her nail polish and in honor of the time she and I spent together doing manicures and in honor of divine design, this gift was given to me by the family. For this project, you of course will need some type of tray. Also, some washi tape in whatever pattern you choose to find. You will also need some self-adhesive gem sheets, a pair of scissors, a burlap ribbon you can find at the Dollar Tree, and also some craft ribbon that was found at Big Lots. You will also need a glue gun, and some hot glue sticks. In order to begin your project, you want to take your washi tape and begin pressing it along the outer edge of your tray. You will see that I have chosen to leave the gap at the top, lining this evenly across the bottom of this row. That way I will be able to overlap the top row of tape to cover that very top panel that you see. Just be sure at this point to press your tape firmly in place. Now we want to go in with our second row of tape and we are going to want to go ahead and align that with the very top edge. Once we have that placement where we think we are going to want it, we can go ahead and begin firmly pressing that into place, just overlapping the first row of tape that we applied. We will go along and do this all across the front of our tray. Now we want to take our scissors and cut just a little slit right on the two corners. That way we can fold down one corner first and then flip the top piece down all across the front of our tray. This will give us a nice neat corner without any buckling. Now we just want to repeat this process on the next little rows. And this is what it will look like when all four of those little rows are complete. Now we just want to go ahead and begin working on the side panels. We want to go ahead and overlap our tape so that it covers all of the front and back of that side piece, pressing firmly into place along the top. As you work down the side of this panel, Overlap your first row just a little bit to ensure that the tape across the top does not lift. And we are just repeating this process all the way down the side. I have decided to leave these little feet just their normal color. Now we can't forget about these little pieces along the front. We need to cover up the sides of the side panels and we're just going to cut a little piece of tape and pop it right in there. And this is what our tray looks like with the exterior completely covered. Now we will begin the inside. For the base of the tray, we will use our burlap ribbon. As you can see, our particular tray has some space in between the slats. This burlap ribbon will be wide enough that it will create somewhat of a floor to keep those nail polishes from falling through. We want to go ahead and apply our hot glue down this first slat just in a zigzag pattern. Now it's time to take our burlap ribbon and firmly press it into place along that hot glue. Now we need to fold our ribbon back and place some hot glue just on the very edge of the next slat where we will be able to place our ribbon on top of it to create our little floor.
And now we just want to repeat those steps on the other side, slightly overlapping that burlap in the middle. And this is what it should look like when you have your floor all in place. To begin working on the sides, we need to take our 3 8 inch craft ribbon and go ahead and measure that out. I have gone ahead and cut us four pieces of that ribbon because each slat will need two pieces each. And I have applied the glue only to half of the slat and am working with half of it at a time so my glue does not dry too quickly. I did go ahead and apply the glue to the second half and this is what it looks like. Now it is just time to go ahead and finish our second piece of ribbon on this first slat and then we will want to continue this process all the way around both sides. And this is what it will look like. And to finish the little end pieces we will just follow the same procedure cutting our ribbons to match. And this is what your container should be looking like so far. At this point we just want to begin cutting our little gems into individual pieces. We will need about 30 of these. And after removing the plastic film from the back, we just want to begin placing these around the perimeter of the upper ledge all the way around, just about 3 quarters of an inch apart. And here's what it should look like all the way around when you get all of your jewels put into place. And we have transformed this into this. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you give this a try, please be sure to tag me and let me see. We'll see you next time.